Hello class, this is Algebra 2, Lesson 59 on page 252. So Lesson 59 has three parts to it. We're going to cover all three parts. Um, but the first part, experimental data, we will focus in on in pre-calculus. Experimental data is more used in the medical and the science field. So this is a crossover uh, to math. So what do we use experimental data for? When, when, why, what is it? And well, So recently, right, we had a pandemic. It was COVID. And all of the statistical data was reported about uh, the numbers of cases and how many, what percentage resulted in death, how many cases reported by state. That was all experimental data that would have been represented on the Cartesian coordinate system. And so they would have plotted the numbers by state to see if there was some relationship between maybe the number of uh, cases, positive cases, compared to the number of deaths. And so they would have seen if there was a relationship, positive or negative, or no relationship. That's what experimental data is used for. It's literally plotting data on the car plotting data points on the Cartesian coordinate system to see if a relationship exists. All right, so let's just assume by state there were all of these. Uh, let's make the x-axis uh, the number of cases reported and we'll make the y-axis the number of deaths reported. And let's assume that as cases increased, right, the deaths increased. And so we would have seen, they would have seen some trend to this. And they would have asked, well, what kind of relationship is this? And this looks like a linear relationship. Remember, linear is just a line. Linear means line such that there's a, some direct relationship as the number of cases increase, the number of deaths increase. That was the case early on with the pandemic. And so they would use this to say, okay, well, how is it increasing? And that's the slope, right? What is the relationship? The relationship would have been your slope. And so if you can pick a line in pre-calculus, we're going to call it linear regression. And we'll use this. It's actually a, com a computerized thing. We'll do it on our calculators to find what is the line that best fits these plots, these coordinate points. Plots are just coordinate points. And so you could find the slope. You could pick any point. Let's say that's three and that's four and pick another point and let's say that's six and maybe that is six and you would you could find the slope the change in y over the change in x now we will not um be doing this in these types of problems in algebra two because we're going to focus in on it in pre-calculus however it's just looking at the data points to see if a relationship exists. Um, so that would be a positive, a direct relationship. Uh, what happened as we, with COVID, as um, the disease, the virus uh, went on, we came up with a vaccine. And so cases leveled off, right? So even though we had more cases, right? The number of deaths did not, maybe, maybe even they went down, right? <clears throat> so that maybe there was this relationship that at some point there it plateaued 
and then it began to decrease. That's a parabolic relationship. All right, so we use statistical data and plots to see what relationship exists. All right, that's the first part of the lesson. Um, I've seen this type of problem on one and only one ACT. All right, so I wanna just look at this and help you with the ACT. It's logical. All right, so if that were my plot points, I realized that I could draw a line through it. And let's just say that's two, one, so maybe here, and then up here would be four, five. <clears throat> All right, so maybe just two. Okay. So on the ACT, you always have five options. So maybe like A, B, C, D, E. Um, and if your options were like eight, negative one half, negative three, two, and then um, one third. Let's just say those are your options. All you need to do is visually look and see what the change in Y or the change in X is somewhere in here. Well, that's four over two, which is two. So the only option that is possible is two. The other options on the ACT are always obviously wrong. All right, so experiment with that. They use actual cases, actual statistics to plot them and see if there's a relationship. All right, the second part of this lesson is 59.B, and it's simultaneous equations. Really, most textbooks call this system of equations. Anytime we have a system of equations, it's two or more equations. And remember, there are either there are only um, a couple of options in relation to those equations. Either they're parallel and they never intersect, right? Or they're the exact same line. So they have the same slope, same y-intercept. This is same slope, different y-intercept. Or they intersect. Typically when you're given a system of equations, as we've done already this year, you're looking for that point of concurrency where both equations have the same xy coordinate value, where they intersect, where they are, your textbook calls it simultaneous, which most textbooks do not. All right, but what's new about this is one equation has a fraction and one equation has a decimal. Okay, so you're thinking about the Miss Haleyism, right? So look at example 59.3. Equation A and equation B all right anytime we have an equal sign we're eliminating denominators and we're eliminating decimals all right so when I have decimals I want to make sure every term has the same number of decimal places, so I'm gonna add a zero there. Two decimal places, two decimal places, two decimal places. Then I just eliminate the decimals. It's as though I'm multiplying every term by 100. All right, so it becomes 6x minus 20y equals 104. Equal sign, eliminate denominator, right? Equal sign, eliminate decimal. And then we'll solve by either using, remember the two options, Substitution or elimination. All right. So for this one, we're going to eliminate the denominator. We eliminate the denominator by multiplying by the least common multiple. So my denominators are 2 and 5. The least common multiple would be 10. So I multiply every term by 10 because that's the rule in algebra. But before I multiply, I simplify. All right. Crisscross, right? The 2 and 10 can be simplified. The five and the 10 can be simplified and the five and the 10 can be simplified. Now I multiply. I have five X plus six Y 
equals negative four. All right, so now I have two equations, five x plus six y equals negative four, and I have six x minus 20 y equals 104. Well, I am going to make, to, to work here with my x to eliminate it. So I'm gonna multiply this first equation by six, every term, we'll make this one negative, and we'll multiply this second equation by five. All right, so remember, distributing that six to every term on both sides of the equal sign. All right, negative six times five, that's negative 30x, negative six times positive six, that's negative 36y, Negative six times negative four is positive 24. All right now, I'll multiply five by every term in this second equation. Five times six, that's 30x. Five times 20, that's gonna be negative 100y. And five times 104 is 520. Now I'm gonna eliminate the x's. So my x's eliminate, and I add my y's, that's negative 136y equals 544. I divide both sides by negative 136. I think that's four. Is four times 136, 544? That's 24, that's two, four, yes. So I believe that it's gonna be negative four is the value of y. I'm not done, I have to solve for x. So actually I'm going to plug x into this equation and I'll solve uh, y into this equation and I'll solve for x. So it's five times the value of x plus six times the value of y, which is negative four, equals negative four, that's negative 24. So I have five x minus 24 is negative four. I add my 24 on both sides. So I have five X is 20 and X is four. And I write my solution in the ordered pair. All right, so we saw for these uh, system of equations before. That's the point of concurrency. That's where the two lines intersect. The only difference is we now have denominators we have to eliminate, and we have decimal points that we need to eliminate. All right, we can only do that because we have an equal sign. All right, the last part of the lesson is vectors. Remember, vectors have magnitude and they have direction. Magnitude is the length of it. If I, if I measured it, I could um, uh, see how long it is. That's the magnitude. That's a number. It's the hypotenuse of the right triangle if we draw the right triangle. Remember, right triangles are always drawn to the x-axis. X-axis. All right. The angle is the rotation from the positive x-axis. Remember, we rotate from the positive x-axis, positive all the way around, right? Zero to 90 to 180 to 270, all the way back around to 360, all right? Always drawing a right triangle to the x-axis, all right? Polar form. Polar form is the magnitude, the magnitude at whatever your angle is, right? So it's it's really your um, hypotenuse over the time at the angle, right? That's how we write. Remember, rectangular is some value r, and that's the value on the x-axis. Remember, that's right or not right. Plus or minus some value on the U. That's on your Y axis. So 
if I drew my right triangle, this would be my R value, that would be my U value. It's the legs of an imaginary right triangle. All right, in this lesson, we're going from rectangular to polar. Always, always draw the triangle, okay? Now, we have already gone from polar to rectangular, all right? And remember when we went from polar to rectangular, to find our R value, we used the, what trig ratio? The cosine. Cosine goes with R, goes with X, all right? To find the U value, we use what trig ratio? Sine, all right? To go the other way, we're gonna use the tangent. All right, to go from rectangular to polar, we're gonna use the tangent, all right? So let's look at example 59.4 on page 254. All right, we, we want to convert negative five R minus three U, that's rectangular form into polar form. So we need the magnitude at theta, and theta is from that positive x-axis rotated around, all right? So I draw it. The um, x is negative, so this is gonna be negative five, and the y is negative, so we're at negative three. So my vector is here. This is my vector. So my this is my magnitude, right? I can do negative three over here. My theta is from the positive x-axis. Well, I know this is zero, 90, 180. I just need to go a little further than 180 to find out what that theta is. And that difference is that angle in the triangle, all right? So I need to use the magnitude. Magnitude is always positive. I use Pythagorean's theorem to find the magnitude. All right, so it's negative five squared plus negative three squared is my magnitude squared. Remember when I square a negative number, it's always positive. So this is 25 plus nine is the magnitude squared. That's 34 is the magnitude squared, take the square root. Normally when we take the square root like this, it's both positive and negative, but because it's the distance from the origin, we're always thinking the absolute, the positive distance, all right? So the value of m is gonna be the square root of 34. And I don't believe that that can be simplified. So you will leave the magnitude in its most simplified radical form. We would not convert that to a decimal at this level in math. All right, so it's gonna be the square root of 34 at, now I need theta. So Pythagorean theorem to find your magnitude, we've already done that, and then the tangent to solve for this angle in the triangle. Then we're gonna add 180 degrees to it. All right, so the tan of theta, tan is, what's the ratio? Soka toa, opposite over adjacent. So it's negative three over negative five. But I wanna solve for theta. So when I wanna solve for the angle, that's when I use the inverse. So when I rewrite this and the inverse, it's the inverse, really that's gonna be positive, right? The inverse of tan, three-fifths equals theta. All right, then you do your calculator. You have to use your calculator for this. All right, so shift tan three divided by five, close your parentheses and hit equals. All right, always want, all right, so theta, that angle, I'm gonna to go to two decimal places for the angle. So this angle is 30.96, but to get 
the angle for the vector, I've got to add the 180. So I'm going to add 180 to it, and my angle is going to be 210.96 degrees. All right, so this vector in rectangular form is equivalent to those values in polar form. All right. Now, let's, what if it were in the second quadrant? <clears throat> let's suppose my vector is here, and this would have been negative 5, positive 3. Well, that one's very good. <clears throat> how, do I get, how do I get that angle? All right, well, the angle is still going to be 30 point, what did I say? 96. But now I want to go to the 180, and I want to subtract the 30.96. So in the second quadrant, if I would have had negative 5r plus 3u, that puts me in the second quadrant. My magnitude would have been the same because the Pythagorean theorem would not have changed, right? Those values. But now my angle is between 90 and 180 degrees. So I go all the way to the 180 degrees and I subtract the 30.96. So that gives me 149.04. So the angle would have been 149.04 degrees. Okay, what if it would have been in the fourth quadrant? First quadrant is easy, right? I'll also put it in the first quadrant. Okay, fourth quadrant. So this would have been 5, negative 3. So this would have been 5R minus 3U. The angle would have been the same, 30.96. The magnitude would have been the same because we have the same values. But now I want to go, okay, remember it's 0, 90, 180, 270, all the way back to 360. So now I'm going to go rotate all the way around to 360 and go back 30.96. So I'm going to go all the way around, that's 360 degrees, and go back, subtract 30.96 from that. So I'm going to go all the way around 360, subtract the 30.96, so that I get 329.04 degrees. And that is between 270 and 360, real close to 360. Okay, if it would have been in the first quadrant. First quadrant is the easiest. So here we have 5, here we have 3. Magnitude, we're still been squared 34. So I've been 5R plus 3U. Magnitude would have still been square to 34. The angle would have just been 30.96. It's whatever you get when you, when you do the tan, take the tan, the inverse tan. All right, so got it? First quadrant, the angle doesn't change. You use what you get when you, get the, when you, when you do the inverse tan. Second quadrant, your R is negative, your U is positive. Right, you're just thinking x, y coordinates. I take a, I, I'm going to use the tangent to find the angle of the triangle, and I'm going to go 180 minus that angle. All right. The third quadrant. Both R and U are negative. I'm going to go 180 degrees and add the angle when I that I arrive at when I use the tangent inverse tan. <clears throat> fourth quadrant. I am going to go all the way around to 360 and subtract the angle that I arrive at, that I calculate when I use inverse tan. Okay? All right, work your practice problems. 
only work B and C.